beautiful people and welcome to the beauty hustle podcast where we educate and elevate in the beauty industry but also having real and raw conversation i'm your host beauty the brave boss and today's topic is going to be about answering the assignment now i know y'all like what are you talking about answering the assignment well today i'm going to address something in the beauty industry that has become out of control okay so for those who may not know or who are new to following me a couple years ago i was i had the opportunity of a lifetime to work alongside a celebrity hairstylist and during that time um let me just say it was fun it was fun but it also taught me a lot of things and most of those things were don'ts um a lot of things that i witnessed um, did not align with who I was as a person and what I stood for. Um, I did not like how I was being treated. So therefore, I ultimately walked away from that situation. And I had a lot of people say, well, beauty, why would you walk away? Like that's, that's a job like anybody would do anything for it to have. Let me just say this. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up is to educate the young hairstylist that's coming up after us and now. Because the culture of the hair business has made a shift and it has made a shift that is not for the good. It has become a joke. It has become a mockery. And this is because of some of the things that people in positions of power have done and have placed okay and also the service providers and also the clients it's not just one-sided okay so that's for another episode we're going to talk about how we can clean the beauty industry up and do better and be better but we have to know better first and when you know better you do better and when you do better you'll be better and that's just how that goes so back to what I was saying, I walked away from that situation because it did not align with who I am. It did not align with my morals and it did not align with my integrity. Me being a female and working alongside a male is most of the time um, unheard of because we are in a female dominant industry. But this particular person portrayed themselves to be God fearing and, you know, was positive and you know, it was all kicks and giggles when the camera was not on. It was kicks and giggles when it wasn't on social media. It was praising me behind the camera. But the moment, the moment when it came to praise me in front of the world for the work that I'd done, the person took the credit for it. And I know some people are like, well, why are you speaking on this now? Let me tell you, I'm a leader in this industry. I have young girls looking at me. They're looking at the way I talk. They're looking at how I handle a situation. And these are things that I talk about in my braiding classes because I'm all about keeping it real and raw, okay? And I'm not talking about something that I read somewhere. I'm talking about something that I literally went through. And it was only for a short time because baby, my spirit was like, this is not right. This is not what you stand for. And this is not, we, this is not what the world will know you for. You know, I want to make sure that my legacy is creating a movement for greatness, for a positive outcome. So I want to make sure of that. And being a part of that was not that, okay? So I was blessed with the opportunity to um, do a music video shoot for a celebrity along working alongside with this particular stylist. Now, again, behind the cameras, baby, everybody was pumping me up at that shoot because of the way I worked. One thing about it, those who know me know I eat, sleep, live and breathe this industry this is all i know i know what god has called me to do and i know it is nothing less 
than what I'm doing now. And I'm so grateful that he blessed me with such a gift to give me such an opportunity to do a music video. Some people may think that that's small, but to me, that's big because that was never on my list of goals to accomplish. That was never something that I aspired to be or do. A celebrity hairstylist was, was, that was not it. When I was coming up, it wasn't about the celebrities because we had no access to them. My goal was to one, open up my salon and educate others on what this industry is about and how to maneuver within this industry so that you have longevity like myself. I had my first client at 13 doing $90 micro braids. I am 30. I have people that sit in my chair and pay $800 to $1,500 for me to braid their hair. You cannot tell me that God has not kept me in this gift. To go from $90 all through middle school, high school, and a little bit of college to now, where I, I've seen six figures, okay? And, and that's only because of how I've maintained myself in this business. That, that, that's the only explanation. My true gift, my professionalism, the customer service, is, it, it's there, okay? And so that's what I wanna teach those coming up in this industry. Now, what I will say to move on to not harp on the situation, the whole point of this episode is to let those know that's up and coming that you do not have to strive to be a celebrity hairstylist, to, be, to work with a celebrity, because let me tell you, it's not all kicks and giggles like y'all think. I hope y'all don't think that, oh, I'm tired of these people that's sitting in my, these regular folks that's sitting in my chair every day. I want to get to the big money. I want to get to the celebrities. Well, let me tell y'all, it ain't, it ain't much sweeter over there. It's not. It's not much sweeter. <laughs> and if you think I'm lying, just go on a social media platform and type in celebrity hairstylist story. Type it up and see what you will get. Now, here's the thing. You're probably like, well, why are you speaking on this now? Well, somebody needs to say something because it's getting out of hand. The way that people treat us behind the chair is getting out of hand. Y'all are treating us as if we are the help. It shows in the way you communicate with us. It shows in the way that you want to barter prices with us. And I'm not even talking about the regular folks. I'm talking about the celebrities. I'm talking about the influencers. And for the life of me, I cannot understand how people sit in positions that they are, that God blessed them with, and have the audacity to treat those that are servicing you the way that you do. Just like you need me, I need you. And I'm speaking for every service provider. It, go, it goes both ways. No, no one is higher than the other. The stylist is not uh, more higher than the client. The client is not more higher than the stylist because at the end of the day, we need each other. Hello, somebody. We need each other. So why is it that when you guys get in those positions that you have the audacity to barter somebody with their prices, one, two, tell them, oh, I'm, I'm not going to pay you. I'm going to give you promo. How dare you? How dare you? How can I say that? You just got some clout. You just started making money off of whatever it is that you do and the influence that you have. You know, you know what it's like to come from the bottom. You know what it's like to just keep striving and keep going and just trying to, just trying to make it. You know what it's like for somebody to tell you, you not worth it or you're never going to be anything or I'm not going to pay you or you're not worth this much. You know what that's like. 
So why would you turn around to get put in a position that you are in to bless others, but yet try to diminish what the service that they're giving you? We got to make this make sense. And, it, and, 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 and that goes into the celebrity hairstylist as well. Because let's talk about it. The last week that I work with this person, I was not paid. I was gone for a week. Actually, three weeks. Actually, I was gone for three weeks. I was paid for the prior week. The last week we were in New York, I was not paid by my employer. Now... The person that I service, because I want to break this all the way down, y'all. I was hired as an assistant. Now, an assistant is not doing majority of the work. The assistant is doing that. Assisting where you need help. Okay? From coloring wigs to doing breakdowns to melting down caps to helping put wigs on not to mention coloring the wigs then on top of that the main artist i braided his hair now let's break this down in the real world when i service somebody i get paid for that exact service now let me say this to put this on record The client called me in the room, gave me my props for how I handled myself, conducted myself through the entire um, music video shoot and pulled out a water cash. I would not disclose how much, but in that moment, I felt like I made it. I made it. And I could not believe what my eyes were seeing. Like, is this for real? Like, like this how they do this over here? Like, what? And I just immediately started crying. And everybody in the room just got up, started hugging me and was like, no, beauty, you did that. I don't know how you did that, but you rocked the entire shoot. I did more work than the actual stylist that was hired. I did more work. So I should have got paid. I, I, I should have got paid for doing the service for the celebrity. And I was supposed to get paid for my weeks of worth of work from the employer, the person that I was working for. I left that city with what that particular artist gave me had I not had he not paid me I would have left that city with nothing with zero dollars to my name how does that happen because I'm gone from my chair I'm, I'm gone from my income for weeks at a time and the money that was given to me I'm using it for for to eat, to Uber Eats, because we were in the middle of a pandemic, so nothing was open. Let's talk about it. And I won't get into further details because that's neither here or there, but I'm just skimming the surface of some things that needs to change in this industry. And the only way it's going to change is if we come together and change them. To my up-and-coming stylists, I beg, I beg of you, stop doing anything for anything. It's not worth it. Y'all are making it so hard for people out here with real raw talent to get into doors because y'all are willing to do it for little to nothing. Do you know what that says? That says you have no standards. That says you have no respect for your craft. So, yes, sometimes you can be like, okay, I do this one for free. Okay, bet. I'm going to get him the next time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just work my way up, which is true. But in this industry, y'all just all out of whack, honey. Y'all just literally doing anything for clout. Clout is a hell of a drug. And it's a drug that's, that is ruining this industry. 
because y'all so caught up on the numbers y'all so caught up on the clout y'all so caught up on who's who and who's sitting in their chair and who did they touch and what city they going to and what designer they wear but you're not looking at the craft we're not looking at the craft itself and why I say it's you're, you guys are making it harder for those with real raw talent, not saying that you don't have talent, but those with real and raw talent come with standards. But we have y'all shucking and jiving and getting y'all away in front of these people and get, doing whatever you got to do to get in these doors with little to no standards. So therefore, when we come up and we have standards like, yes, we'll do the job, but these are our standards. We get pushed to the side. Why? Because I got a whole gang of millions of thirsty people in this industry that literally do it little for nothing just so they can have a picture, just so they, they can have something to post on social media. And let's be real, y'all. Let's have real and raw talk. You do it free for one time or a little to nothing, they going to think that you're going to keep doing it for little to nothing. And it goes back to your value, your respect. Don't ever think that you too small to stand on business when it comes to your craft, when it comes to how much you say your services are. Don't ever think you're too little because you're never too little. Baby, when it comes to God, you are a big deal. And you got to say that to yourself. I am a big deal. God gave me this gift. He shown me what I can be with this gift. He's shown me the lifestyle he has for me. He has shown me where I'm going to go in life. I am a big deal. One thing about my mama growing up in my house every day, baby, you can be anything you want to be. You can be anything you want to be. I told her I wanted to be an ice skater. I, I, didn't, I, I wanted to be a ballerina. I, everything that I told her, you can be whatever you want to be. There is no limits. And my mother instilled confidence in me and in what I do. Are you kidding me? How dare I play myself little in front of this person because they got a million followers. They got 700K followers because this celebrity that said nature, I don't give a darn about none of that. Especially if you came to me, if a celebrity hit y'all up, don't ever law by yourself to get in that dough. Because if you got, if God put you in a path and they saw your work and they saw fit to DM you, stand on business. Because they know darn well if it was anybody else, any other race, they going to stand on business and they not going to waver. They not going to waver. So why is it that in our industry that we got to waver so much? We got to keep moving the finish line. We, 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 we got we, we to gotta keep lowballing ourselves just to get somewhere. At some point, we get tired of running in place. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm ready to get to the finish line. I'm ready to get to the next level. I'm ready to get to the next race. But I can't get there because I'm steady lowballing myself because won't nobody accept me and my rate and what I have to offer. But you know why that is? That's because it starts with you. The respect starts with you. We have got to get these influencers and these celebrities to respect us. And I'm not trying to be mean. This is just what it is. This is just what it is because these people that we are servicing are the same people that know the grind. They know the hustle. They know how long it took them to get where they are. So why would they do us like that? Why? When they say it be your own people, but somehow in some way, the narrative has got to change. The narrative has, it, 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 it's got to change. And it's gonna start with us coming together as a unity to know you're not about to play with us. You're not, the play, you're not about to play with my sis over here on the hair. You're not, you're not about to play with my sis over here on the makeup or my brother on the hair or my brother on the makeup. Whether y'all like it or not, we are one. 
When they talk about one person, they talking about all of us. They, they, they bring us in as a collective. That's what they do. So why can't we stand up as a collective and stand on business? Why? Because people, y'all be so thirsty for clout that y'all literally ready to step over, step on, stomp, punch, kick, whoever you got, whatever you got to do to get somewhere for a picture to post on social media. And let me tell y'all, some of y'all done did everything that I'm saying and ain't got nowhere. All you got is a picture. All you got is a video. Hello, somebody. Can we keep it real today? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just not one of those educators that's going to get in front of your face and tell you all the good, good, and just paint this picture for you and not let you know what it really is. In this industry, you either eat or you get ate. The choice is yours. Okay? And off to, I'm, I'm telling y'all, I'm speaking to little me. I'm speaking to the girl that's really in this 10 toes down and, and, and trying to figure her way through this thing with no help, no mentor, no guidance. You reaching out to people and ain't nobody responding back. I'm, I'm talking to you. You got this. You got this. You looking at a person who been in this industry for 15 years. I ain't never got help from nobody. Ain't nobody ever gave me a handout. Ain't never gave me a... Ain't nobody ever gave me no hand out, no hand up. No, here you go. Let me connect you with this person, that person. None of that. And look where God has brought me. Some of y'all have to understand that everybody is striving for the same thing. Why are everybody striving to be a celebrity hairstylist? Why is everybody striving to work with these celebrities, to work with these influencers? I'm not understanding. What are your purpose at? I'm just trying to figure out where your purpose at. There is no purpose in only servicing celebrities. What's the purpose? What's the value of that? Oh, and since we talking about value, listen. Just because you do not have a celebrity in your chair or influencer in your chair or anything like that, that does not mean that your work is less of. That does not mean that your value is lesser than the person that is servicing that person. Because little do y'all know, when y'all see these people posting these celebrities, nine times out of ten, they're not getting paid unless they're on a contract. Let's talk about it. So don't be getting hyped up about everything you see on social media. You're like, oh my God, this person in that chair, da 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 she serviced this person, but you don't know what she's doing to get that person in their chair. She's probably working for free. But... Y'all so stuck on just seeing the person in that chair that, oh, that means they made it. But if that's the case, wouldn't that mean I made it? I did a whole music video. My work was on the biggest billboard in Times Square during the pandemic. Wouldn't that mean I made it? Oh, but, but, forgot, I didn't make it. Nobody knew. Why? Because the person that I was working for took credit for everything. Imagine me, somebody who was grinding. I'm talking about flying from three cities, three different states, back to back, getting it. Was finna at a fourth city. I'm talking about I'm on the ground getting it. Really, really, I'm, I'm, I'm really from that type of hustle getting it and i get blessed with that opportunity and you take the credit for it you don't know how to braid you don't even know how to color with the brush until i handed you the brush and showed you what a shadow root was but i mean see what i'm saying y'all y'all can't believe what everybody put on these platforms because it's plenty of celebrity hairstylists that work with us little people, okay? And then take credit for the work. So this all ties into 
answering the assignment. From the influencers to the celebrities, you are now in an elevated position. Whether you like it or not, you are a leader. People are looking up to you. They're looking at how you move, how you operate, everything. And also, God put you in a position to bless his people. Why can't y'all answer the assignment? Because y'all think that, oh, I can just go get somebody else to do it for free. I can go get somebody else to do it for free. But why not build a relationship with somebody that you know that's good? That's, wanting to, that's willing to grow with you? And I ain't even busting your head about the price. Because having all these different people in your head, that's not how it should be. What happened to just having one, one or two hairstylists? What happened to that? And some celebrities say, oh, that's not hypothetical. Or that's not ideal. I think it is. Put that hairstylist on contract and take them everywhere with you. Okay, that's, that's just that. Answer the assignment. And for you celebrity hairstylists, I don't even know if I said that right. Celebrity stylist, whatever. And y'all are looking for a braid assistant, somebody to help with wigs, somebody to do this, do that, do that. And, and you're trying to form a team. Treat them right. Treat them right. And you won't have such a high turnover rate of going through braiders through your city if you would do right by people you won't have to keep constantly making posts about you need a braider you need somebody to braid down your clients because you don't know how to braid do people right y'all be having some real people cross y'all paths some real people that's ready to ride this thing out with you but yet you do them wrong because of your entitlement and your ego and because you're not answering the assignment that's on your life before i took that job i told god i said god you know i'm a boss you made me a boss i'm traveling i'm literally doing what i prayed for but i know it's more i know it's more it's more it's 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 more that you want me to do it's more i don't know how i'm gonna do it i don't know how i'm gonna get there but if i have to humble myself and be an assistant to somebody and just just sit back on the back burner and and watch and learn and soak up all all the knowledge i will do that i will do that and when that time came that was my test the person asked me to be their assistant and i said yes remind you i had already ca had a conversation with god like I will do this to get to wherever it is that you've shown me and where I'm going to be in life. I, I will do that. I will humble myself and be somebody's assistant. That was my test. That was my assignment. What was I going to pass? I, I passed my assignment because during my journey and working with this person, I was faithful. I wasn't promoting myself. I was literally strictly there to work. And I did that. I did that. Now, that person's assignment. God caused you to an elevated place. You came from the gutter. You came from the gutter. And you get where you are. You sit in that high seat. And you take from somebody else. For what? Your assignment was to show the world that not only are you a boss, that you helping other bosses boss up in other areas in their life. Do you know how much you would have got back from that? Because you would have answered the assignment. But instead, in that, you decided to take. Now, don't get me wrong. That person is still going to stay highly blessed and highly favored because that person is a child of God as we all are. But when you fail an assignment, when God has called you to do something, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. 
And the reason why it has taken me this long to tell you guys exactly what it is and what it ain't. Because I had to heal from that. I had to heal from it so that I can speak from it in a different manner. So that the message that I am giving can be received in the manner. In the manner that I, that I want it to be received. This has nothing to do with no clout chasing. It has everything to do with me sitting back and watching other people go through what I went through and me not say anything. How dare I not? And y'all are sitting back like, am I the only person going through this? Am I the only person this has happened to? Oh, I'm not going to say anything because this person got power. This person got clout. And nowadays, clout is the power. And people be like, well, you can't fight with that because people love this person. Whether I say something or not, it's not going to make a difference because it's still going to happen. Let me tell y'all something. Keep talking. Keep talking. Don't let nobody, nobody keep you quiet. It's a way you can address things. It's a way. And I apologize for me for my voice being elevated, but this is something I'm passionate about. I don't like when people trying to get over on people and, and really getting over on people and stepping on people to get ahead and thinking that it's really getting them somewhere. Trust and believe to, to the little me, to the other person on the other side of this video, and you saying this has happened to me, your time is coming. Stay true to you. Stay true to yourself. Because people like you and I, we ain't got to step on no toes. We ain't got to take credit for nobody else's work. Because our gift is real and raw. And the proof is in the pudding. Hello, somebody. And I don't want to go further into details because I'm pretty sure there will be a part two of this. But I just had to get this. I had to get that off my chest, y'all. I pray that this message has reached someone. I pray that you find in yourself that you are enough. I pray that you know that you are capable of everything that God has for you and what he has shown you. I pray that every vision that he has given you does come to fruition. Keep going. Keep putting in that work. Keep God first and you will forever remain on top. It may not be somebody else's top, but it's going to be the top where you got people looking at you, coming to you, asking you for advice. They're asking you how you did it. They're asking you, how did you make it through? They're asking you, well, you were hurt. Now you there. Let me know what the game is. Put me up on game, sis. You got a calling on your life. Walk in it. And that is it for today's episode of the Beauty Hustle Podcast. And remember, just answer the assignment. Until next time, y'all. Bye.